Museums are where we go to experience the truest forms of human expression. Paintings, sculptures, photographs. The Peterson Museum does the same thing with automotive culture. Here you can explore the magnificent scope of the car world from its artistry to its surprising quirks. Other places may be better known for their influence on the auto industry. Think of Germany and Italy and Japan, but in the 1950s, the right people, the right environment, and the right circumstances all came together to create a nucleus of car culture. It was California. California has probably had the most profound influence on the automotive industry that any place could possibly have. When you think about California, you, you have to think about all the circumstances that came together at exactly the right time. And not just the topography, but also the um, discovery of oil, the um, uh, Hollywood boom, the, the real estate boom, all of those things, they combined to make Southern California the place that it is today. Because of Southern California's um, reliance on the automobile, you had to have automobiles. You know, it, it, it was a given. But you didn't have to have bland automobiles, and there's always somebody there who's willing to come in and fill the need. I think a really good example of cars for the California market has to be the Petite Special, the only surviving one of which we have in our collection. Uh, it's very important to the collection for an awful lot of reasons. Um, the most important is how it looks. A fellow by the name of Kennedy took a car that was being made in Detroit called the Princess. And he said, you know, this is a great size of a car, but it's not very flashy. It'll get you around, but it's, it's a little frumpy. So what do we do to make this Southern California? Because keep in mind, in the teens, Southern California already had more cars per capita than just about any place else. So how do we stand out? How do we proclaim our um, extroverted spirit? I know, let's paint it white, a bright car. A bright color of a car that you don't see bright colors in New York. You don't see bright colors in Chicago. Um, but you see them in Los Angeles. And let's give it helmet fenders. And let's nickel plate everything. And while you're at it, why don't you put a California top on it, which is a, uh, a removable top, hard top on an otherwise open body. And it, instead of just doing one or two windows in the top, why don't you put a half a dozen, no, put a dozen vertical bevel glass windows in the back. And let's make, really make this thing important. Southern California, is home to an awful lot of design studios and indeed the Art Center College of Design, which is arguably the world's leading um, design school for anybody that wanted to go to learn how to design a car. I mean, and not just draw it out on paper, but really design a car, look at all the nuances that you have to embody in vehicles to do it properly for industry. Um, and it's not here by accident. That school is here and these design studios are here because Southern California inspires people. The sun shines a little differently in Southern California, it seems, than it does other places. There's an energy in Southern California. It's a little warmer, it's a little drier, it's a little more electric here. A very famous um, professor at Art Center College of Design, Strether McMinn, he was the one that, that was really responsible for Calti being here. Because he, he told them, he said, look you guys, if, if you want to make a car for California, you have to be in California. You have to live the life, you have to drive the freeways, you have to drive the mountains, you have to, you have to see the suburbs, you have to go to the deserts. You have to experience all of these things. Otherwise, you're just not going to get it. You, you, you can't pick up a magazine or watch a news report and really absorb what's going on here and absorb the excitement and the, and the thrill. So the kind of people that are going to go west are the kind of people that are by nature adventurous. By nature, they want it better. By nature, they, they want to improve their circumstances. So you've got a lot of people in Southern California who are uh, descendants of those people. And they can't help but have a little of that, of, of that bread inside them.
You could argue the 1950s was the peak era for automotive culture in California. Just look at the impressive variety of machines Californians created back then. It was a time when hot rodders took on European sports car builders, and sometimes they even won. You know, Old Yeller's a favorite of mine here because it, it embodies all of the, all, all of the self-sufficient spirit of Southern Californians. That didn't, it didn't owe anything to any, anybody else except for the engine, which was a Buick. Max Belchowski would build cars that were essentially junkyard dogs, which is how our car got its name, Old Yeller, from the dog in the movie. Kind of a mutt, but uh, it, it went out there and it beat the Ferraris and it beat the Lamborghinis and it beat a lot of other very, very expensive cars. And this is a car that a fellow with a really keen understanding of engineering and what made a car go and handle, this is a, a car that he, he drew the shape of in chalk on his garage floor. That's a kind of, of independent, can do, I'm not gonna wait for it to happen, I'm gonna make it happen. So you've, you, you've got this confluence of, of wonderful scenery, you've got Hollywood propagating the dream, you've, you've got um, people here who are ready to seize that opportunity, and all of a sudden you, you've got a part of the world that has done more with the automobile than perhaps any other.